call the July 26, 2018 regular monthly meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary District Trustees to order. First item is roll call. Second item is roll call. Ju Judy Caballero. Present. Joe Carroll has notified us that he will be here as soon as he can. He has been tied up at work, so he'll be arriving late. Aubrey Strauss. Present. Here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> ben Viola. Here. Jason Greenleaf. Here. Nick Rico. Present. Here. And I'm Charles Anderson. Approval of the June 28, 2018 regular monthly meeting. So moved. moved second. Is there a second. Moved and seconded. Any corrections? Nick? Uh, page 7, under Mr. Carroll's remarks. Mr. Carroll, Mr. Carroll apologized if he, the word should be misled, M-I-S-L-E-D. Yep. All one word, no hyphen. I hate that autocorrect. That's it. Good catch. Any other corrections to offer? If none, all those in favor of the motion as, as corrected. <laughs> all in favor, none opposed. Thank you, Judy. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, next item is the Superintendent Operations Report. David. Okay, a copy of the monthly report of operations for the month of June is included in the packet. Our F average effluent flow for the month was 1.19 million gallons per day. Our effluent quali quality was well within our permitted limits with average the average 96 and 97 percent removals for VOD and TSS with concentrations of 12 and 8 milligrams per liter. Copy of the pump station flows is included in your packet. Again, Liberty Road Industrial Park pump station had erroneous flow data on the 24th. Wood and Kern has been looking at this and uh, believe the issue may be due to a programming issue within the PLC and, and they have since downloaded a new programming a program into it uh, and we're uh, seeing how that, if that resolves the problem. Okay. Uh, Rudy's completed its uh, Job shadow at the Wells Street facility for the Management Candidate School. And uh, as mentioned last month on June 21st, Glenn and I conducted a half day training course for new operators focused on the inter intricacies of the nit nitrification denitrification process. Um, since that time, I received uh, the class evaluation forms, which I wanted to share with you specifically. I wanted to point out the good words spoken about Glenn and his knowledge. I thought, I thought that was uh, very positive on that. I felt good about that. Um, uh, Pump Station 25 is online. That's the new station down at Dunstan Crossing. We have had some um, uh, startup issues, uh, specifically with regard to the vacuum priming system. We have think. Uh, we think we've solved it at this point. Um, Smith and Loveless did come out and they, they identified some issues on their end and have addressed those issues and haven't noticed in anything since. So we still got some programming and uh, 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 some of the you know, punch list items that need to be addressed here, but the station is pumping wastewater into our system at this point. Is that our, is that, we haven't accepted that yet? We have not accepted that yet, no. Um, pump station grease removal. Uh, last month, uh, Mr. Carroll had asked if there had been any reduction in the amount of grease at district pump stations as a result of uh, the district's fall fog program. And I, um, I misspoke saying that there, at that time that there hadn't been due to significant re residential contributions, but on my way home, uh, I, I came to the realization that pump station one, which is down by Snow's Canning Road, has had a significant uh, reduction <coughs> over the past year since the installation of the um, system at Maine Seafood Ventures and um, other businesses down that area. So I, I just wanted to uh, re bring that around for uh, Mr. Carroll and, and address that issue. 
Cummins Northeast has completed the installation of the upgrade of controls at pump station 19, which is the one at Nunsuch River, and are still working on the controls at pump station 20, which there is down by Evergreen Farms. Uh, since the upgrades can take several days, we borrowed the town's portable generator. You may have saw it parked in the, the parking lot at uh, pump station 19, and we temporarily set it up such that um, uh, it could provide emergency power for pump station 19 during the time that the, its primary generator was down. Pump station 20, which is the one down at Evergreen Farms, is a, a low flow pump station, and we, you know, if there was a situation that required us to respond to that due to the uh, power outage, uh, we could manage that situation utilizing septic trucks, and that's how we're addressing that one. I've started the process to update the district's personnel rules and regulations with regard to background tests, drug testing, and drug and alcohol policy. Um, I've been working with our legal counsel at Bernstein Shore on that. We've begun the search process for a collection system laborer or operator. I've reached out to Public Works, Scarborough High School, uh, the JETSI program, DEP, New Hampshire DDS, other superintendents, Roots to Boots, Jobs to Maine, Monster.com, and Indeed.com, and Maine Wastewater, um, uh, Water Environment Association. Uh, the positions also listed on our website. I think we've received 18 applicants at this point. Um, the other day, Glenn, Carl, Rudy, and I got together and we um, plowed through six of them, 16 of them, uh, narrowed it down to four with, uh, I think, three, two or three alternates. Uh, we reached out to four uh, to conduct interviews. Um, surprising to me, only two have actually contacted us back since then. <laughs> Um, it's, it's no surprise to you. It's not surprising to you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in the middle of it too. <laughs> um, so we'll be interviewing those two and uh, probably bringing in a few others to, to interview on that. Um, let's see, where am I here? Unitel. On July 12th, the town held a pre construction meeting with regards to the Unitel metering project located on uh, the district property that we rec recently sold to Unitel, which is the property down off of Easton Road. Uh, I've been meeting with William Current to discuss asset management approaches and options, and uh, they're getting back to me on that. This is a silly thing that I, I wanted to address, but I had our website updated such that uh, when you search it, you get the little logo our logo on, uh, in the little uh, address bar along with everything else. But, you know, I see a lot of other companies do it. And I wonder how you can do that. You know, you call your internet provider. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, oh, uh, attached to the results of a survey that I was involved in with regards to how various communities deal with private sewer services, the ownership of, maintenance, and repair, um, uh, specifically with regard, to, most specifically with regards to what's in the public right away. Uh, the results are highly variable, so talks in this regard will continue. Um, that being said, the Scarborough Sanitary District's policy has uh, been uh, that what is within the right of way is the district's responsibility, and what is in the private pro property is the owner's responsibility, except when addressing sewer service blockages. If a service is blocked, no matter if it is within the public right of way or on the private property, it is the owner's responsibility. Um, let's see, 16 Woodspell Road, as a result of a storm drain inspection, the town discovered that the sewer service for 16 Woodspell Road had been inadvertently connected to the storm drain. Uh, the town reached out to the district via, uh, and via uh, CCTV equipment confirmed the cross connection. I met with Riz Barrett, who subsequently made the repair on the 19th. I notified DEP via phone and provided the written notification um, uh, that I since emailed to you separate from the packet. Um, so I did provide that um, notification of non, I forget the terminology now. Non-compliance 
slash discharge incident report, which is the uh, notification process to DEP uh, on such an incident. Um, so that's, that's been done uh, as part of the uh, non-compliance uh, incident report. They ask um, specific measures needed to prevent this reoccurrence. Since, you know, this, this cross-connection occurred 15 years ago. Um, since being with the district, um, I had developed some protocol with regards to doing some sewer inspection, and part of that protocol is TVing the sewer service out to the main, and also uh, once the connection is made, is observing flow in the downstream manhole, uh, sewer manhole. So both of those actions are a way that um, uh, to prevent something like this from from happening um, in the future. Um, was it what, the contractor who connected them? Yeah, the contractor. So the con contractor has to pay for any expense involved? Um, I have not reached out to the contractor uh, that did the connection. Um, we've actually had, uh, since this happened, we had another one identified, which is a separate contractor. This was 15 years ago mm -hmm. for one and 20 for the other. I don't even know the, the I'm not, not familiar with the second contractor. So. Before we move on, um, so another, another really important note about this is anytime we do come across sanitary sewer connection to the storm drain system, Mike Shaw should also be notified. Scarborough was one of the 14 southern main communities that's subject to an MS4 permit. This is considered an illicit discharge. So he also is required to report any of that information. He notified us. Oh, good. Okay, good. All right. It, it, this hadn't talked about that. Yeah. It says you notify DEP, but he has to report that as well. So yeah, good. The, the, I'm uh, glad. I always say things like this in our meetings, so I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> the, the, uh, it, this and the, the second one, which is being repaired next week, both got uh, discovered as a part of their MS4 program. And they are on a uh, four-year inspection program of all their storm drains. They're in. They're about actually. They're in the second year of this program, um, and they're about ready to finish up the second year. And they're going to start year three in year two. So they're they're actually ahead of the game. Yep. Um, and it, that that four-year program, they should have inspected 100% of their, their storm drains. And so. then we start all over, yeah. And start all over again. Right, but, yeah. I'm, so, I'm, I'm glad to hear that, that their dry weather monitoring program is finding this, that's what it's supposed to do. So, yeah. excellent, and, thank and you. And they were, uh, they were a recipient of uh, the non-compliance discharge report also. Excellent, thank you. Yes. So I think it's encouraging that, uh, that our current procedures that are in place that were not in place 20 years ago years ago mm -hmm. should provide additional assurances that these types of things don't yep. currently have much chance of falling through the cracks but I gotta say I, that and that and two dollars and twenty cents will get us a cup of coffee. <laughs> I gotta say I was pleased when uh, this was first identified that our inspector um, our current inspector even commented on you know, our current uh, protocol would not, something like this would not happen. So he is actually, he's following it. So, you know, I was using this opportunity as a, you know, reminding everybody of the, the, the SOP that's in place and reviewing it. So we'll go from there. Thanks, Steve. Mm -hmm. um, Do you have anything additional that you wanted to add there? Uh, not in that regard. I, on the news, there was an incident in Portland Water at Portland Water District East End plant where they had an overflow. Um, I, I did want to let people know that you know this is a small uh, community of operators, and um, I had had I did reach out to Portland Water District and, and offered uh, Scarborough Sanitary District assistance in whatever way we could. Um, you know they didn't. They, at that point in time, they had already resolved the issue at the plant, and it's, at this point, it's more of a repair so, situation. So. And that's all I have. That's fit for operations. Uh, correspondence. 
Main DEP Wastewater Treatment Facility Inspection Report. Yeah, I attached a copy of Matt Height's uh, May 10th inspection report. Uh, as noted in his observations, the operation and maintenance uh, are very good at this facility. So um, and we received another exemplary report from DEP. Great. Uh, and Moody's Collision Center. Uh, Moody's Clinton Center is proposing to build a new uh, facility at, uh, in, within the Walter C. Nielsen Business Park, uh, on, uh, which is off of Broadway um, or Muzzy Road. And um, it is in South Portland. It is in South Portland. The, 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 the road's in South Portland, but the flow. Uh, and the gravity sewer is actually owned and maintained and operated by South Portland, but that all flows to the district pump station um, on that road, which is located in Scarborough, and eventually pumps is pumped to Scarborough. There is an intimate, active intermunicipal agreement between the two communities concerning that um, uh, that roadway. And I attached uh, the, their ability to serve along with that, a, a copy of that agreement. So they, and, and pointed out that they would be um, um, uh, required to follow, follow the, the restrictions of that agreement. Mr. Chairman, I had a quick question sure. out of curiosity. Is this a new Moody's or one that's already nearby that's relocated? I do not know. I think there's just one right up the street and it's three blocks on Broadway and so forth. It's relocated. Yeah, there's one in Pleasant Hill too. Yeah, there are already two in the same area. I was just curious. So it appears this is a relocation. <clears throat> yeah, I reviewed it at the DDP. That was a was my understanding. They were relocating the one that's on Broadway. Yeah, it needs it more space. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you. So that will be coming before us in some at some point. Yeah. Great. I had a question on the, the letter. So we base it on the average flow yes. or the, the max maximum daily? We base. Let me get a copy of the letter out so I know. Base what on the or fees uh, on the oh the just uh, the, the capacity reserve fee? Yeah. It's based on the average daily flow. Average daily. They have quite a, quite a difference. They have 497 to 1,367. Um, yeah, I, I haven't analyzed their flows. Oh. Because I, I, you know, at this point in time, it's kind of rudimentary. I don't think they were closing. Okay. Uh, I took a, a brief review of it, and it seemed relatively right within where I, I thought it should be. Okay. You might want to touch base with South Portland. Uh, they, they're currently discharging to South Portland sewer system mm -hmm. and make an inquiry to them about why the variation in that. Like give us a heads up of something okay. we, might, we might want to look specifically at it um, when they come to us with their plans. Questions or comments? Can, can we go back to the original part of the superintendent's report, or do you want to wait till the like the very end? You have a question? Yeah. Yeah. Can sure. I, okay. 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 So I had so in the first part of the superintendent's report, so I had two questions on that. So um, the first was we talked about utilizing septage trucks to manage. Um, pump station 20 if there's a power outage because it's low flow. Mm -hmm. And I was just curious, do we have like a, like an on-call emergency contract with the local hauler that we can call when we need it and it's a fixed price kind of a thing? No, okay. we don't have a, a, any contract. We do have uh, agreements, not agreements, um, uh, relationships, I'm going to say, with several um, uh, septage haulers that have um, have never failed us. Frankly. Yeah, 
So they've always yes. been responsive. Yes. They've always been okay. very responsive. Yeah. Okay. And then my second question was about the private sewer services. So I absolutely understand that for private services, the district doesn't have a responsibility, if, you know, for the portions that are on the private property. But how, you know, how many, do you generally have any information on uh, where infrastructure is located on private property or is it a total mystery? Like, do you generally have an idea of a subdivision that has a private system where things are roughly or is it a crapshoot? Um, it depends. Yeah. It, so hit it, hit or miss. Yeah, it, it, the newer developments and plans in the current, well, the current ones we're trying to GPS and, and, and get all that information such that we have it. Um, the, and you the, get that through the planning board, or how does that? GPS. Yeah, yeah, like if it's a private development and a private system, how does that get to you? A private development and a private system. Yeah, pri I'm talking about private the, systems only. Yeah, we would uh, we would get that through the engineer. That still has to come to us for approval. Okay. All right. So you'd get it from the engineer. So okay. we get. I mean, we get plan sets that will show us where the infrastructure is proposed to be located. We should get as built final drawings. Mm -hmm. They should have. They should have uh, located location cable buried if uh, if we require it. Mm -hmm. um, so we have opportunities during the review process to. And we do get as built though. We do get the as built after. Okay. Yep. That was it. I just okay. wanted to ask those two questions yep, before great. we moved on. Thank you. Um, Old business, Pine Point odor abatement. Uh, Rizabera has started the work on the installation of the Eco 2 system at Pump Station 1 um, on Snow's Canning Road. I posted a notification that this work was uh, moving forward. Um, they have since completed the slab, placed the cone, and all the under, un underground piping. Um, we have some wiring and can controls and some internal piping uh, left to do. Um, we are running behind on this project um, for a number of reasons. A busy construction season is one of them. Um, but we're, we're pushing as hard as we can to get this done as soon as we can. Any estimated completion date? Um, I, I would hope, let's, I'm hoping uh, mid, let's see, we're in July, mid-August. Mid um, the, the issue that I see right now is the controls piece. We're pushing as hard as we can. Okay. Um, point hydrogen sulfide monitoring results, which kind of go hand in hand yep. with the previous item. Yeah, we continue our hydrogen sulfide monitoring program. Uh, in fact, I actually bought two more, uh, uh, they're called Oda Loggers, uh, the brand name, uh, to deploy out into the manholes. Um, these results are presented below, and I've highlighted the most recent results since our last trustees meeting, which were all zeros. Um, have. Next, next month, I'll have a lot more results as a result of uh, uh, acquiring two more meters. And we, and maybe this is later on the agenda, I'm not sure. What's uh, that? You, sorry, uh, maybe it's later on in the agenda, but we did, when I was down at the district last Friday, we did talk, there were a couple odor complaints that had come next up. Next item. Next item, okay, good. Before there it is. On, could you just explain, so the average, you have the average mill, uh, milligrams per liter. Mm -hmm. What what at what point do you can you smell it? I guess you have the peak at eleven and, and ten and five. But oh, uh, well, what point can you smell it? I, actually, I, I don't remember. It's fairly low. I think it's less than one. Less than oh, one. Less than one. You can start to smell it. Yeah. So when are you reading it's it all? Low. Yeah, it's it's very pungent. And actually, when you get very high levels, you lose the smell sensation. That's the that's the danger of it. But at any rate, uh, for the last week of June, the first 10 days in July, uh, the zero numbers indicate that 
between the improvements that we made at the seafood processing facility and our ongoing maintenance operations um, that the problem at least is under control until we bring this new system online. Yep. The answer to the question is that you can smell it at about 0.13 ppm and a rotten egg odor is about 30 ppm just for scale. So 0.13 ppm, which is the same as milligram per liter. East Grand Ave odor complaint? Yeah, we did have a complaint from East Grand Ave, which is at the outer extremes of our collection system. I, I've actually spoken to this woman a couple times over the uh, several year, uh, last number of years. Um, and um, to, as I say, it's out by Old Orchard Beach. The, the complaint had been for the previous night, and she noted that there, there was no odor at the time of, of of the call, uh, and Glenn and I did go out and investigate, and we didn't notice any odor or any issues in, in that area. Um, the thing of note is that the odor log for that time period did not detect any hydrogen sulfide in uh, on the Pine Point Road. So, you know, and and she she even expressed that she you know didn't think that it was sewer, but wanted to give me a call. And then moving on, that we did receive an old uh, odor complaint at Old Mac Road, I think the, the very next day, um, at our pump. And uh, a gentleman had been driving by the pump station, had noted the odor, and gave me a call. Um, I actually had been at the, the pump station and had already noted the odor and had made arrangements to have the uh, carbon uh, in the odor control system there changed out. So um, he was appreciative that we were already addressing that issue even before his call came in. Just incidentally, I happened to uh, take the family for a walk on Pine Point Beach last Friday night on the way back up Pine Point Road in the area of snows canning, windows down, sunroof open, came across a very, very heavy pungent smell, turned around, went back to kind of investigate and get a little bit more of a smell to tell if it was, you know, marsh or whatever. Um, it was a, and my wife and I, well, I said, do you smell that? She said, yes, I do. I said, what's it smell like to you? And we both kind of had the same assumption that it was a, a pulpish smell, like a, a paper mill you would smell when you go by. And it certainly wasn't marsh, didn't appear to be sewer, but again, upon investigation, pulled into Snow's Canning in that area of the parking lot and it got significantly stronger and then there was a very skunky smell to it and it was quite clear to us what it may have been <laughs> but it certainly wasn't a sewer odor it was the from coming from the building down yes. the way yep yep so it was it was very heavy and quite noticeable just driving down the road yeah. so and I, and I smelled the same thing in that exact same area about two weeks ago yep mm -hmm. so did you report these things did you like call the code enforcement office or anything he did it I did not. Might not be a bad. It might not be a bad idea to let them know that there are other sources of odor. Do we know if they are getting calls about that? No, I have no idea. I have no idea. I'd be. I wonder. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't mind calling next time. I. We can. Uh, I mean, Dave, you can you can forward that information on to uh, codes just so they mm -hmm. know. So I mean, it's mm -hmm. something that it's something that other folks, the general public, would be concerned about. They could be assuming that it is our, our problem as yeah. opposed mm -hmm. to someone else's, so it would be good to get that information to code enforcement unless they get claims and complaints pointing at us for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in my case, I had a, a visitor from Pennsylvania with me, and we had the windows down, you know. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. I explained what that is. Um, <laughs> one more point in that it was a lunar high tide on July 9 and 10. Hmm. So there was an extra high tide and probably an extra low tide that corresponded with that. I'm wondering if that had something to do with it. It very well could have. I didn't, I actually had, did not know that. So thank you. Okay. Any Good questions for the superintendent on any of those? Okay, we're good to move on. New business. Scarborough Sanitary District personnel rules and regulations. 
Uh, dismissals and demotions. As requested, I re worked with our legal counsel to revise our personnel rules and regulations with regards to dismissals and demotions as follows. I deleted, the deleted text is shown with a strike and the new text is shown in red. I'll, I'll read it and try to convey um, what I, that to the, the audience. Um, dismissals and demo demotions. When in the judgment of the superintendent in the following is struck as approved by the Board of Trustees, and the, the text continues unstruck. The employee's work performance or conduct justifies dismissal or demotion. The employee shall be so notified, this is added, in writing, and the following is struck, of the pending action and the date of disciplinary hearing before the Board of Trustees, at which time the employees may present any information which he slash she feels pertinent to his or her case. Uh, and the following text is added. Any employee aggrieved because of some condition of their employment shall have the right as defined within the grievance procedure. So for clarity, I'll just read what is being proposed as the text, the, the current text. Dismissals and demotions. When in the judgment of the superintendent, an employee's work performance or conduct justifies dismissal or demotion, the employee shall be so notified in writing. Any employee aggrieved because of some condition of their employment shall have the right as defined within the grievance procedure. I recommend approval of proposed changes as presented. So not to be picky, but shouldn't there be a period after in writing? Unless the, to be picky, yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, if the possible, period at the end of case was it's struck, it's possible that the period at the end of case might <laughs> still be there. Yeah. But yes, <laughs> at the end of the sentence, there should be a period. Mr. Chairman, would you like a motion to approve yes, this please. as presented? Then so moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? There being none, all in favor? None opposed. Okay, move on to B. Okay, um, Scarborough Sanitary District Personnel Rules and Regulations on Compensation. As requested, I re we worked with our legal counsel to revise our personnel rules and regulations with regard to the probationary period as follows. Similar to before, deleted text is shown with a strike and new text is shown in red. All new employees, this is the following is struck, or the following is inserted, and current employees promoted to a new work classification shall undergo a 90 days to strike and replace with six month probationary period and will be paid a probationary rate as outlined in his or her letter of employment. At the end of the, the 90 days is again struck in, at, in six months inserted, probationary period, the superintendent will evaluate the employee's performance period following is struck and will offer suggestions of improvement if warranted. If in the opinion of the superintendent, the employee has successfully completed the probationary period, the, the following has been added. The probationary period will end. If in the opinion of the superintendent, the employee has not successfully completed the probationary period, new employees will be terminated while current employees will resume previous work classifications. The following has been struck. Employees' hourly rate will be raised to the rate agreed upon at the time of the hiring or in the case of the promoted employee to, to the minimum entry level for the work classification. Employee hired at the minimum wage will be exempted from this policy. The following remains during the 90 days of replaced with six month probationary period, new employees will not be eligible for a sick leave. Again, I'll read it in its entirety as being presented. All new employees and current employees promoted to a new work classification shall undergo a six month probationary period and will be paid a probationary rate as outlined in his or her letter of employment. At the end of the six month probationary period, the superintendent will evaluate the employee's performance. 
if in the opinion of the superintendent the employee has successfully completed the probationary period, the probationary period will end. If in the opinion of the superintendent the employee has not successfully completed the probationary period, new employees will be terminated while current employees resume previous work classifications. During the six month probationary period, new employees will not be eligible for sick leave. I recommend approval of the proposed changes as presented. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. I'd just make, like to make the suggestion that as you read it, uh, where you have the, you refer to probation period as probationary period. Okay. In some places it is probationary. So I think you'd use the same wording throughout. Okay. So where you have probation, mm -hmm. I would stick with the probationary period instead of probation period. So I think we have it. I see it in a couple, three to four spots. Okay. I will. <clears throat> um, one other comment. Yes. Uh, two, actually. Um, in the red lines, in the middle of the paragraph, where it says, if in the opinion the superintendent mm -hmm. successfully uh, the employee has not successfully completed the probationary period. New employees will be terminated, while current employee, I think to be consistent, you need to put an S yep. on the end of current employees. Yep. Um, and at the very end, it says new employees will not be eligible for sick time. Are there any other benefits that need to be enumerated here, like vacation leave? Um, I can't even read my own writing pension plan, that type of thing. Does that have to be added here as well, or are those not allowed during a regular probationary period in another part of the policy? I think they dealt with, I think they dealt, dealt with, with in another section. Yeah. Okay. In other words, this is the section of the compensation that we're dealing with. Oh, the all right. Period. Okay. It's just that the sick leave was what sort of bringing in human resource stuff. Yeah. And, and, I think, and I think it was because that's that's currently in this section of the... Oh, okay. The but everything else is covered under yes. separate sections. Thank you. I, I guess I have one more question about that. Sure, Jason. Maybe you can talk some sense into me here. When I read, new employees will be terminated while current employee will resume previous classifications. What if we have two probationary employees at the same time? The way that reads to me says that no, new what, employees, all new employees, will be terminated. <laughs> oh, I see what you're saying. Um, yeah, I mean, clearly, it's the employee who's, question. whose probationary period has just ended. Okay. So I don't know if we need to. I, maybe we don't. I just the way I read that, I was like, wait a minute. This. Well, we have we have kind of encompasses. We have twelve employees. Right, not not twelve hundred. So yeah, the likelihood of us having two at the same, same time. Is the same I guess we can deal with it at the time. But could the new employee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I might cut and let go. Yeah. Right. <laughs> is, um, yeah. So clearly, uh, one of these is a, an employee, an employee who's been promoted to an, another position. Mm -hmm. If his performance is unsatisfactory in the probationary period, he's going to go back to his former position, which presumably he was doing a good job at if he was given a chance to be promoted right. up. So it doesn't warrant termination for that employee for trying to move, for trying to move ahead. So I think, I think it makes sense. Okay. Any other comments or questions? I just had a clarification. Yeah. So if they go to the six-month probationary period, not working out. That's it. No extension of probationary period. No, um, the six month is cut is a uh, uh, state of Maine uh, law. You can't a probationary period can't exceed six months. And I actually talked to our attorney and said if after six months you're starting to question it, it's probably That's not really a good idea to go much beyond that. Okay. And, and, and it also assumes that the employee is getting periodic reviews during that six-month period. So we're not going to wait for six months 
and give one valuation at the end of six months, but the employee, if he's not measuring up, should have gotten several chances to clean up the act prior to the six month probationary period ending. Do, do we have, in another section, do we have uh, a review uh, period of time called out six, 30, 60, 90 days, or is it no. a certain amount of reviews in the first six months? Or, no, we, no, know? we don't. We don't okay. have anything defined like that. And that, you know, you get too definitive about the procedure if you miss one of them, all of a sudden you right. walk into that. So Understood. Um, you know, if I'm doing my job appropriately, I should be um, addressing, you know, talking to them on a weekly basis. <laughs> right. Um, and if something comes up right away, you know, they should know about it. Yep. Um, nothing should be a surprise in a review process, the way I look at it. Correct. Okay, all those in favor of the changes? None opposed. Also, I'd like to note for the record that Joe Carroll arrived at 8 45. Item C Residents at Gateway Commons. On behalf of um, KGI Properties LLC, um, Spago Technics requested that the Scarborough Sanitary District Board of Trustees amend its approval of the proposed residence at Gateway Commons <coughs> located off of Pay Road in Highgate Parkway. On October 26th of uh, 2017, the Scarborough Sanitary District approved the construction of Phase 1 of the proposed of the proposed apartment complex. At the time, phase one consisted of constructing buildings numbers 1,000 to 8,000, building 11,000 and building 12,000. Um, the remaining two buildings, buildings 9,000 and 10,000 10, would be constructed as part of phase two. As requested with this amendment, buildings 9,000 and 10,000 would be constructed as part of phase one, and buildings 11,000 and 12,000 would be constructed as part of phase two. Phase one and two would each include the same number of units as previously approved. Uh, this request is just changing the construction sequencing. Um, so uh, I recommend uh, approval with the following conditions. Phase one consi um, consists of buildings numbers 1,000 through 10,000, and phase two consists of buildings numbers 11,000 and 12,000. Uh, phase two currently is not approved and will require future consideration of the board. And all other conditions of the October 26, 2017 um, approval shall remain in place. Mr. Chairman, I move approval with the Conditions enumerated by the superintendent. Second. Moved and seconded. Can we take can I take a second here and look at this map with the superintendent for a second? And see if we have the numbers correct here again. So this is phase one. This is the proposed change to phase yeah. one. 11,000, 12,000. So, oh, so, yes, yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, so, phase one is going to include buildings 11,000 and 12,000. Yes. I apologize, dyslexia <laughs> on my part. <laughs> um, and phase two is going to consist of buildings. Nine and ten. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nine thousand, ten thousand. Yeah. So buildings, buildings nine thousand and ten thousand are phase two. Mm -hmm. Nine thousand and ten thousand are now phase one. They're currently phase one. They're going to become phase two. I, I flip flopped the numbers by accident. In his oh, I just picked it up when he was reading his when he was reading uh -huh. his recommendation. He reversed the numbers. So eleven and eleven thousand and twelve thousand are going to be part of phase one. If you look at the project, eleven thousand and twelve thousand are at the back of the the, the most rearmost part of the project. 
which means they'd have to drive construction vehicles through the whole completed project uh -huh. to get to phase two. Yeah. And by reversing this, then the phase two project doesn't have to disrupt everything that's going on internally within the project. So that was their rationale for making, for making the change. I apologize for that. So it's going to be buildings 11,000 and 12,000 will be part of phase one and, and 9,000 and 10,000. Point of order, do I need to amend my motion? Yes. Yes, that would be a good idea. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I amend the motion to approve buildings 11,000 and 12,000 as part of phase one and buildings 9,000 and 10,000 as part of phase two, along with the rest of the conditions enumerated by the superintendent. I do want to point out in their letter, they correctly identified the buildings. It was, uh, it was my error. Okay. So we have a second to that. Second. I still have an open question, though. No. Okay. <laughs> question. Ask your question. Yeah. Uh, so I get maybe we've gotten rid of this now, but my confusion was around the one thousand through ten thousand of what is now phase two, or did we get rid of that? Nine thousand and ten thousand are removed from phase one and become phase two. What, so 1,000 through 8,000 right. is... Right. So we don't have the potential for 9,000 buildings under this approval, right? No, each building is... A, they be building, the first building the first is 1,000. 1, 1, okay. So where this said building numbers 1,000 through 10,000, we've struck that language now, right? No, those, that's the way they delineate the buildings on the plan. No, no, so but there's one I, building, and it's designated as building number 9,000. No, what, what, I see where Jason's going with this. That first condition should be renamed or restated as consists of buildings numbers 1,000 through 8,000 plus 11,000 and 12,000. And then the second phase yeah. would be yes. 9,000 and 10,000. Yeah. Correct. Those two were reversed with our amended yeah. motion mm -hmm. and amendment. Amended second. But it's not 1,000 buildings building no. numbers. No, those are the Number building 1, numbers. 000. Right, and that's where my confusion, do we get into a problem if we left that language there of 1,000 through 10,000, that could consist of 9,000 buildings. Could they just throw extra building numbers in there at any time? The build, they're planning to identify as each building with a number, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, on, on the... Okay. On the plan provided, they show it as building okay. number. Okay. As long as the plan is clear, then I'm good with yeah. it. But yeah. if we word it exactly like they have it in their third paragraph, it's accurate and clear. Right. I'll include 10 residential yeah. buildings. Nope. Nope. Just what's in parentheses. 1,000 through 8, that, yes. which is what we're talking about. Yeah. That's the same language that I'm using. Yes. Well, it's not the same language that's in the actual. Our, no, but our, it's the one that I just amended. What he right. just amended. Right. That's yeah. what I'm so saying. The, the amendment should read exactly like the yeah. third paragraph in their letter. Yeah. <laughs> so phase one will consist of buildings 1,000 through 8,000 and building 11,000 and building 12,000. I don't know why they don't call them buildings 1 through 12. But <laughs> <laughs> well, that was, uh, and that's exactly why my <laughs> concern is, is because they they leave this as open as possible, then yeah, maybe there could be a, nah, you know, 1,505. No, it's, yeah. it's, 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 I'd rather list them out, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. The, the, the story that I was told with regards to the building numbers was um, building, floor, apartment number, and something else, I can't remember. So each... Each so building each has several Each number apartments. had a, definitive, a defining factor in where the, how, how the apartments were laid out. Sure but it made it confusing. I'm sure it makes sense to someone. Uh, but we do have a plan yeah. that's part of the submittal. So the buildings with those numbers are shown on the plans, and there's no other buildings that are going to be allowed to materialize without further review and approval by both the planning board and the, and the, and the district as far as service. But I think we're covered with the Good. motion the way it's Thank you. One final point of clarification. Yes. We are adopting that third paragraph, right? Because the only thing that's not in the superintendent's stuff is the addressing of the uh, of the garages in phase one and phase two. 
because there's still three garages that are going to be built as part of phase two. Yeah, and we don't sue the garages, so they're kind of outside of our purview. Mm -hmm. Well, it looks I like they, they may have connections. connections. They yeah. do not. They don't? They do not. They're showing connections. So. They do not have connections. That's what I was looking at then, too. I thought they Mary they do not have there. connections. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're showing it. Is it a storm drain? Is, it, is, there a is that what that is? In the, uh, in the garages or floor drains? Or? They would be oh, floor drains. drains. They do not have sewer connections. Uh, okay. Yeah, we're not looking at the sewer. We're looking at the storm drain. Yeah. They do not okay. have sewer so connections. That's a storm drain. <laughs> This is a looks suit. like they do. Yeah, it that's well, well, let's yeah, be clear. Why don't we just yeah. be clear in the in our approval that there are no sewer, sewer service connections permitted from the garages? I like it. Amend the amend the motion. Clarify that in the motion. There are not so there, are, there, there are not intended to be connections, and we are not approving connections from the garages to the sewer system. So there won't be any floor drains from garages running into the sewers. Thank you. Okay, okay I amend my motion to state just what you just stated. Or is Jason having heartburn with that one? Uh, clubhouse in the pool now. <laughs> I'm not sure I follow. What's, What's that? Going There's on? a clubhouse in a pool yeah. shown here too. Yeah, and that was part of the original approval. Yes, it was. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was. All right. Good. Sorry. Go ahead, Nick. I didn't want to. That's right. Make this happen five times. I've lost track how many amendments I've done. Okay, so what I'll take is I'll take a I'll take a specific amendment to the motion to the main motion to indicate that there will be no sewer services from the garage buildings. Okay, I move that there will be no sewer services directly to the garage buildings uh, as part of this approval. Second. All right, so this is an amendment to Nick's main motion, which is on the floor. Any other discussion about garage connections? I would note that the plan does not show sewer connections. <laughs> I missed it. But to be clear, to be clear, let's get this done. All those in favor of the amendment? The amendment's approved 7 to 0. All right, now we'll vote on the main motion as amended. Any other questions on the main motion as amended? All those in favor? None opposed. Okay. So we have approved. Buildings 9 and 10 being moved to phase 2, and 9,000 and 10,000 being moved to phase 2, and the three garages and no connections to sewers. And we're good to move on. Well, I did have a question. Too late. No, this is just a question kidding. going Please. forward. <laughs> <I'm just coughs> the actual, these are all the fees for the uh, capacity, capacity reserve. reserve. Capacity reserve. Those have been paid, or they have been paid. They have been paid. Fine. I'm okay. You are. You've always been okay. Uh, let's see. Next item is sludge hauling report. Yep. Last year, I had proposed a one-year sludge hauling pilot to evaluate the costs associated with sludge hauling versus sludge composting. After years of operation and working through the four seasons, we were able to evaluate the true costs and ancillary benefits and shortcomings of this option. RMI did provide a uh, brief write-up <coughs> summarizing this pilot, which I provided in your packet. As previously noted, one of the major cost savings was in labor. Prior to the pilot study, we had a staff of 13 people. During the pilot study, we successfully operated with a staff of 12. We did have issues with odors as the trailer filled, but were successful in containing and scrubbing those odors using our existing odor control system. We also had some initial I issues with the trailers leaking, but the sludge hauler resolved those problems. And so as, as presented in our annual audit, sludge composting costs the district approximately $150,000 per year. And as I, and I just wanted to point out, part of that cost is um, labor, but it's actually uh, uh, one individual half time. And as a result of this, we actually operated with uh, one full person removed from the staff. Uh, this, th this one year pilot program cost the district $146,000. Uh, I recommend approval or continue with offsite sludge disposal of, of the district sludge. 
Um, one of my one of the things I didn't talk about here is our existing sludge composting operation. The equipment is starting to age, and um, if we do decide to continue with composting in the next uh, within the next five years, we're talking about replacing the bug mill mixer, the, the the loader, and other fairly expensive pieces of equipment. So this was fairly timely uh, opportunity. So. Uh, with that, I recommend approval of continuing with off-site sludge disposal of the district sludge while maintaining our composting license. We do not have to let that go. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, John. Moved and seconded. Questions, comments? Question. Go. Um, Mr. Superintendent, uh, do we anticipate entering into a contract with them so that we can um, a fee schedule so we can anticipate, uh, you know, do we anticipate, you know, doing a contract or do we? Yeah, we, we would go into, we, we'd enter into a contract. Uh, there's also a uh, group of facilities uh, like ours that actually uh, join together and go out and go as a, a group uh, bid. bid to try to uh, get, better price I believe Wells is part of that Wells is part of the sludge cartel yes we are I was not using that terminology but <laughs> I think it's consortium now oh wow consortium <laughs> so uh, yeah it's something that we would uh, you know we'd go out to bid on and, and uh, make sure we were getting um, uh, uh, fair and equitable prices and what we do is we sign up for a five-year contract when we choose the bidder, the successful bidder, and we renewed every five years ever since 2002. So I'm not sure what RMI would require to do something like that, but uh, I'll say this: Dave got a much better price per ton than I did with the sludge cut. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. You're not using RMI. No. We are using Casella. They were the successful bidder. RMI did not bid on our request for bid. Okay. Thank you. It seemed like it would seem like in this bidding process that successful that successful demonstrations of uh, satisfactory handling equipment, uh, composting, disposal, marketing, et cetera, would be, uh, would be kind of crucial to any any negotiation mm -hmm. uh, for that. So if you're going to put this out to bid, I'd hope you'd have some wordings to that effect in the, in the bid documents. I, I guess that would lead to another question I have. If for some reason this goes out to bid under contract and the uh, all of the bids are far and above what we paid this past year, will we still move forward with this? Um, probably not. We, we do you need to make that a part of the motion? I don't think so. I think I think when we, we get the bids back in again, um, we have a budget in place. If the bids don't match our budget, the superintendent will have to come back to us with recommendations. And Fair enough. We can also use that as a <coughs> negotiating tool once we receive bids. If they're too high, the superintendent can sit down with bidders and does the superintendent have to go out to bid for this? For a project this size, we do. Why? Uh, I think it's in our rules and regs. Uh, if, if we as a group went out to bid and got all these prices and our mind gives a better price to Scarborough... As long as it's a competitive bidding process, yeah. we're fine. Okay. So if there's a competitive bidding process, and an independent contractor <coughs> submits a price that's, that's more favorable than the prices received in the bid, we'd be able to look at that. We have to, I think we'd have to have wording to that effect in our bid to disclose our intent to receive bids from other, okay. other sources, but I think the superintendent could do that. Hmm. I'd be uncomfortable awarding a contract for $150,000 a year for five years, that's three quarters of a million dollars without a, without a formal big process. Okay.
Okay, we, did we vote? No, you did not. No, did not. So we have, we have a motion and a second. Any other questions? All those in favor? Anyone opposed? None opposed. Budget summary. Uh, the six month budget summary is included in your packet. I recommend approval. Motion to approve. Second. second. Moved and seconded. Would the second come from? Joe, I think. Joe, Joe, Joe Carroll. Uh, just note that the budget is in very good shape uh, year to date versus a year to date budget. So. I don't see anything that's out of order except for our power bill, which is <laughs> energy conservation. No. <laughs> that's what I'm chalking it up to, conservation. It just amazes me that the utility is having all this controversy about overbuilding residents and the PUC is now asking them to go through and do a, uh, an audit of the charges to folks. And yet here we are calling them, telling them that they're underbilling us dramatically and we get no response. So, I don't know, throw up your hands and wonder. Uh, we're, gonna, we're setting that money aside though, and uh, when, uh, when everything starts to get sorted out and they come back to us telling us they, they want us to pay them money that they never tracked or billed, we'll have to see where it goes from there. I just had a question. Yeah. I just noticed uh, that the insurance seemed to be kind of double this month of what we anticipated. I wasn't really sure if there was a causation. I tried to stop you from doing that, Dave, but... <laughs> Sorry, that's okay. What was your question? Uh, budget uh, with the insurance. And uh, specifically, what was your... Current month. Current month, month $3,411.75. Current budget, 1500 That's really just a timing issue. It's a timing issue. Okay, that's what I, I assumed. We, we, try, we, we try to... Payments. At the beginning of the year, we yep. try to... Petition it out, but it's. I just didn't know if there was a change in our insurance. Yeah. Or, nope. Thank you. Matter of fact, we are actually, uh, I think, next week sitting down and meeting with our insurance agent to go over renewals. Okay. Thanks a lot. All those in favor? Not opposed. All right. So, public comments. There are no members of the public in attendance. <coughs> Trustee comments. Joe. I'm feeling a little out of sorts tonight, <clears throat> being okay. all the way down at this end of the table. I apologize for my tardiness. Uh, I was late to do my full time job. But uh, I have no other comments other than just to thank the district and the employees for their continued work. Then? Uh, no comments tonight, thank you. Okay. I'm sorry, Judith. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can say Judith if that's easier for you. Judith. I noticed that David Hughes and some of his employees were in my neighborhood this week fixing a problem, doing a wonderful job. Thank you, David. Come back again. We need to see something wrong. I'd like things to be right. We'll be there Monday. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Glad to hear you're doing a good job out there, David. Aubrey. All right. So. First, I would like to apologize for Nick and I being goofy during the roll call. We had planned to answer each other's names, but I thought he was going to chicken out, so I didn't do it. And then I, whatever. So I'm sorry we were being unprofessional, but just trying to have some fun. Apologies um, accepted. On a serious note, I want to again compliment um, Dave for um, recommending that Rudy attend the Jet Sea Management Candidate School. I think, I mean, that's an excellent, excellent program. I'm glad to see it went well. I'm glad his internship with you, or his, not internship, a shadowing, shadowing went really well. And, and you know, I've known Rudy for a couple of years and I've seen him growing a lot. And I think he was the right candidate for that and I'm just glad to see it. And second, I just wanted to give a shout out to Glenn. You mentioned that Glenn got a lot of good compliments. And for the trustees that, that don't know it, Glenn is very, very well respected across the state as a top notch operator. So kudos to Glenn for um, not just what he does every day, but for making us proud in that kind of a forum as well. Um, and then lastly, I guess a shout out to Google, which kind of came in handy twice during this meeting, me looking up sulfide and you looking up tide charts. So go Google. <laughs> 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 
There's a sign on the door that says turn your cell phones off in the chamber. It was because work it's related. Fine. Interferes with the audio system. I don't think anybody minded. <laughs> Nick, do you have an apology you want to throw out there also or not? You stole my thunder, Charlie. Yes, I apologize for being goofy with Aubrey. It won't happen again. Mercury is Aubrey, in retrograde. I will be sitting at this end of the table next week. One never knows, Charlie. One never knows. Oh, I get my good. seat back. He's splitting us up. Did you just hear that? He's not Joe, the boss of Joe us. wants a seat back. <laughs> <laughs> um, on a serious note, it was a pleasure to have Rudy come to visit us at our facility. Um, I echo Aubrey's comments. He's a good candidate. Congratulations to him on his graduation to be. Also, kudos to Glenn for being such a great teacher and a great resource to fellow operators in the state. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the summer. Jason. Well, first and foremost, I'd like to wish my beautiful wife a happy 15th anniversary today. Uh -oh, I hope it's not today. It is today. Uh -oh, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> you give dispensation for those kind of things. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. Happy anniversary. She didn't know that, Charlie. She said everybody makes now it. she knows. <laughs> <laughs> but also, uh, congratulations to Dave and the staff for all their hard work and another successful DEP report out. Thank you for all your hard work. That's it. Uh, I'm just going to note that the summer is flying by here. I can't believe how fast things are going by. And I would like to thank our staff and give them kudos for continuing to really do uh, a great job and to the superintendent. In so many of the areas where we have issues that are defined and discussed, he's, he's ahead of the curve and taking care of these issues before uh, we have to hear from them and give him direction. So I do appreciate greatly his being on the ball and in tune with what's happening and taking care of business. So uh, just give you a pat on the back along with everybody else, Dave. And thanks to all our staff for doing a great job. Um, and uh, with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? We are adjourned. Good thing. Thank you.